A lot of you guys ask me about my eye color 550. I haven't gotten to use it as much as I want to, but in this video, I'm here with Richie from Brands and Empires, and I came to get the lowdown on the white tuner printer from the guy who uses it the most in my eyes. How you guys doing? My name is Sam Bates with T-shirt Silence, and I help you start T-shirt business from home. Where are we at? Like I said, man, we're gonna get to white toner business models right after the intro. <laughs> My name is Rich Shannon with Brands and Empires. You guys can see me on YouTube at Brands and Empires um, or at lasertransfersupplies.com if you guys are interested. So that's pretty cool, man. All right, so I just gave you this great intro earlier. said, you know, you're the guy that I see using the white tuner the most. Yes, Probably yeah. actually the, the two, the Rich and Richie. <laughs> Rich and Richie are the guys that I know uh, have the big white tuner printer. So right. uh, from that standpoint, man, what is white tuner printer? Printing for people out there who don't know. Okay, yeah, so if you don't know, the white toner transfer printing is a lot like VTG, where you can produce full color prints for your t shirts with just one at a time. You don't have to do two, three dozen, you don't have to run a bunch of screens for screen printing, you don't have to cut and read and transfer like six colors of vinyl. You just print it out once and the full color photographic print ready to go. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool custom. I think it has a very, very like specific use. You know, every every printer has its good things, right. its bad things. I think it has a very very specific use. Uh, so that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, so before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the technical. How steep is the learning curve when it comes to the things that you need to know? What things do you need to know when it comes to getting started with white toner printing? That's a good question. So when it comes to white toner printing, one thing that I found out really early on is that there is a narrow range on like 10 different variables and you have to master so many different moving parts just to get a good result out of the gate and um for instance you have to have the exact right temperature you have to have the right pressure you have to have a good quality heat press to get that out of it and when i first started out i mean i thought i'm a smart guy i'm a pretty quick learner and i started learning transfers left and right because i just I couldn't nail the process um so i would say in terms of learning curve it's extremely steep if you're trying to do it yourself if somebody is there to, I don't want to say hold your hand, but they can walk you through the process and show you. I've, I've trained my employees within two hours and they're up and running in autonomous. So it's quick if somebody can show you, but it's real slow for trial and error. Yeah, because I think a lot of people don't get, like you don't see the rhythm or even like some of the things that I teach. Yeah. I find people like when they send me videos, like, I'm like, that is not how I do it in the video, right? They're moving too slow or they're doing it from the angle or whatever the case is. So hands-on training trumps everything. You got somebody that can sit down with you and show you exactly how it works. It comes out to be a little bit smoother with processing. For sure. For me, what I find is like I like the heat press so much because of exactly what you said. If you can, if I, if you can say, hey, I had some problems with the white tone printer um, when I started, when I can show somebody else because I know and to I, I mean you can have a, a brand new employee off the street ready to work for you day two. I mean, just think about it. You know, like. If, if you watch a video where somebody's showing you how to do it, but then for whatever reason you put your finger down and you do something weird, you might have to go on a forum, ask a question, hey, why is this happening? And people go through a million different things and it's completely irrelevant. And then finally, two weeks down the road, somebody's like, oh, you put your finger right there in the middle of it. If somebody's standing over your shoulder, they're like, hey, whoa, right there. That's the thing that you're doing wrong. You need to eliminate all of that issue. Yeah, I started like now, I'm like, hey, send me a video. Like, yes, for, before any video, video, send me a video, and then I can help you diagnose the problem. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the, the questions that you got to ask to get the diagnosis, and they're like, no, that's not it. I'm like, well, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, through my blind questioning, where you're fumbling at, right? And yeah. it becomes a little bit easier. Because you, you don't want to talk down to people like, well, have you tried plugging it in a place? You know, you don't do that kind of stuff. 
You want to find out what, what exactly. And that's been the case since I was like, hey, restart your candles. <laughs> <laughs> this can't restart. Yeah, it's all it's all great. Great. Uh, so uh, one of the huge questions that people have, or one of the first questions people have, or, or even, uh, I guess, discrepancies that people have, is the, the durability and washability of white tool. Yeah. Uh, and as a person who uses it a ton, what do you feel about it? Okay, so one of the big things on durability is you need to have negative space in your body. So when you're looking at an image, if it's a solid like 11 by 8 image, if there's no breakup in that art, I mean, it's going to feel crummy, it's going to sound weird, and it's not going to wash well. You're going to get cracks through it. The second thing is just being straight with people. Whenever, whenever we sell our stuff, we have wash instructions. Hey, you need to wash this inside out on gentle, and it lasts plenty long. I mean, we've got an agitated washer, and I hate it. It tears holes in sheets and tears holes in... in you know, towels and stuff like that. But when we turn our stuff inside out and run the gentle cycle, I've got white toner strips that are 30 washes in that we destroy. That's nice because I'm the opposite, bro. I, I wash everything on hot, and I got like, if it's me washed, I got two loads. I got whites, I got colors. Yeah. And I'm like, as fast as possible, just get it out of my way. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of people are similar, right? Like, sure. But if you're purchasing something from retail and you really care about it and, and you get what you want and you see wash instructions, probably will use them right. Uh, and it's important that you wash things the proper way, but I'm a tester and I test everything the same just to see how it performs because I know if I, if it can survive me doing it, then right. it can, you know, survive someone else out here doing it. So I want to dive a little bit deeper now um, into uh, the actual goods of this video. And the goods of this video are the print methods, right? And, yeah. and, and uh, the business model, I'm going to call them, that you use your white toner um, pretty for sure. Let's jump into the first one. I follow this journey of yours, uh, and I remember when we started, and you, you purchased the machine intended for what, and how did that process go for you? Okay, so when I first got it, I assumed that it was going to be as like a supplemental for my automatic screen printing press. So I'm thinking, okay, I've got customers that come in, they typically buy 72, 144 shirts. What am I going to do? And this happens all the time, and they don't come back for 12. Well, you know, I've got a lot of customers that maybe they've got a three, four, five color design, and it's it was a huge money pit for us to rig up several screens from the front, several screens from the back to run 12 shirts for a reorder. And I you don't want to tell them no, especially when they're customer that makes 10, 15 thousand dollars in business a year with me. So we would just end up taking the pit. And I hated that. Um, but I had a BTG from like 2011 to 2015, and when it blew out, I said then do it again. So for me, it wasn't an option to go back to that for my little quantity. Um, along comes White Tone. I said, you know what, let me give it a shot. And we did, that was that was how we got started. We said, okay, this will be our overflow, our little quantity, our prototype machine. Um, and boy, in April, that took a month, right? for sure. Right, right. What happened in April? So in April, my, my wife, who was a serial entrepreneur as well, and super creative, she said, look, I don't know anything about Photoshop, I don't know anything about this. But I know that that's a full color machine that can run one at a time. So we've got a whole inventory. I want to start my own clothing line. And um, so sure enough, she did because we had all the equipment, which is kind of the opposite end of a lot of people approaching. They're like, oh, I want to get this equipment to do this. She's right. like, have it, let's do it. So she did. We, we did three weeks worth of research. We put together ideas. And she hit the ground running with several dozen designs. And um, we did 800 bucks in the last 12 days of April. Scale to 2300 to 3500. July, we did a whole month, 6500 that month. Then it kind of slowed down and then shot up to 17 in March. Nice. So I want to back up and then we want to jump into sure. to, 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 No, I actually kind of led you right in there, but I want to back up before I, I, I miss this point. I think it just slipped my mind. Uh, no, I got you. So when you, when you were doing the, okay, I'm going to use this for small reorders yeah. or you know things that don't hit that, that large run of the mm -hmm. automatic machine. What were your customers' feedback for, especially for the ones who had an order that was screen printed, and then you know their their uh, their reorder was a different process or different feeling? That's that? a great question. So I, I had one customer in particular. Now it's important to know that coming from screen printing, a lot of my customers don't like big patchy art. So a lot of my stuff was vector art. We're talking two, three, four spot colors, not a whole lot of blends, um, which made it easy. If you're coming from a vinyl workflow that's very similar, right? Yeah. You know, you know, so a lot of my art was tailor-made for laser transfer. I know maybe that's unique, um, 
But one customer in particular had a couple of hot, heavy, patchy areas, and his guys were lawn guys. So they go out there and, and they eat their stuff up, you know, they, they yeah. you know, wash them off right away. And um, wash them every day. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 that kind of thing. Each of the guys gets like 10 shirts and that gives them two weeks worth of apparel. And they did say that, hey man, you know, we noticed that it's washing pretty heavy, but right on the scale, they've been washing heavy, like 15 washes in back problems. They were already getting rips in their stuff, anyways. Mm -hmm. So they're getting grass stains, oil stains, rips, and stuff. So he's like, you know, it doesn't seem like it's staying as fresh as long under these circumstances. He's like, but I mean, we only get half of the summer out of the shed, anyways. So it kind of it, it it worked out, you know, yeah. But I mean, that was, was interesting because he didn't notice the feel because these guys didn't seem to care. Right. But he did notice that, hey, it doesn't look as fresh as it did. It seems like it's cracking sooner. And I had to explain to him, yes, it is cracking here after 10, 12, 13 washes in your, you know, in your situation beat it up. Um, but that's not because it's under cure. Because he had just these print printing shirts. That so he washed it out. Oh man, I screwed that one up. Yeah. I, I didn't cure his um, shirts properly, or I should say it was a high humidity day in Florida, and we're printing his shirts, and we overflashed the, the white layer. So what happens mm -hmm. is we build a flash, it's cured, we lay another layer down, it bubbles up. So you have like this bubbly junk. And long story short, it was a mix of totally cured stuff on the flash dryer and uncured stuff on the, the conveyor. And the reds washed out and things started cracking. And um, he, so when he saw cracking, he was like, oh my God, this is, you know, this is the um, blue and whites and stuff like that. I was like, no, 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 it's a different process, but yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, I think that's super interesting. So you don't have one person who really kind of like pointed at different stuff? Yeah, he's, he's the guy who I was most concerned about because this is the guy who like had six different meetings about how we were going to do this art and printing. And she made a big And sure enough, he did come back and was like, hey, but then he was cool about it. He actually, he was like, that new process, I can do 48 pieces. I was like, yeah, yeah you can do 48 pieces instead of 72. He's like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And he did that right. four or five times after. So he was like, oh, I don't know. And he runs it anyway. Go ahead and wrap this one up. Yeah, I think this was a wealth of knowledge for you guys out there who've been asking me uh, about the eye color machines. Uh, oh, one more question. And also, this is weird. the other thing was cost. So I saw I saw something the other day. Um, somebody linked it to me. They were comparing like it was it wasn't a Rico. I can't remember what machine it was, but it was a DTG machine. They're like, you can get this print. 40 something cents, and then compare that to a five dollar white toner print. And I was like, man, and I went through the numbers. I was like, the numbers were true. You couldn't get a 50 cent DTG print for, for a comparable four dollar and 20 cent white toner print, but it was it was hilariously skewed because it was it was a white shirt, a white cotton shirt, with like an eight inch by eight inch design, no pre treatment necessary, no underbase necessary, and did it on the fastest set of ink, which would look genuinely awful. Yes. And they compared it to having to use like a full A3 size sheet with, you know, just this little image on it, not being sure yeah, not exactly. apple. It was I was like, well that's not apple style at all. You know, this that's is ridiculous. Exactly right. Right. Yeah. Let's put a good quality print that requires an underbase down. And then we then all of a sudden, oh wow, it's the same. So yeah, there there are situations that there's the reason I'm looking at a rubber GTX down the road is specifically for white cotton keys that don't require pre-treat to get my print cost down to 50 cents. Right. But there are cases where Typically, it's close to even, and then there are situations you can cheat. Of course, you're you're just one more straight yeah. up. But um, again, that's understanding what you need out of a machine. I think a lot of people they buy equipment because they want they want it to do everything because they don't know what they want to do. But if you know exactly what you want to do, then the decision on what equipment is going to do that specific thing does show up becomes a whole lot easier. Start start with the end in mind. Yeah. I think that's important. So real quick before we do wrap it up. The last thing I want to ask you was, what do you find the biggest difference between the 550 slash 560 uh -huh. uh, and the 800? I have both now. So I have the 560, the brand new 560, and I have the 800. And we got the 560 to do glitter. So you know, you can do full color prints on this like glittery shimmery background. It just adds some things to that I love it. But um, the 800, you click print, and I can I can literally throw a $200 stack of transfers there. You know, like five five to fifty transfers, press print and it spits out the other end. I mean it'll be like static loading, you can like arcing lightning everywhere by the time it's done, but it just it just doesn't. I mean right, it's either not like if it's in a jam, if it's like static overload, nothing. It it feels like an industrial piece of equipment. So I, I trust it. It's super cheap to operate and I like that. 
do I think you should start off with that? If you're just getting into the business, probably not. Like if you're just if you're jumping in and it's a stretch for you to get a 550, 560, use it. But know that it's going to be slower to print. You know, you click print, it's going to take a while. You're going to have to load a sheet at a time. Even if you put 10 pieces, you got to hand load each piece at a time. And you're working with a little bit narrow area, a narrower print area. So if you want to do like a big all over print, you're going to have to smart cut it back together. So I think of it in terms of how much you can earn per hour. You know, you're not going to be earning 12 hours a day at whatever your peak is. You're going to be spending a lot of time doing art and stuff. But with the 550, 560, it's going to take you probably twice as long to do something as it would on an 800 when you're working with larger print areas. Um, in the smaller print area, you can do it in a similar amount of time, but there's other there's other challenges that come along with it. It doesn't it doesn't feel like I want to run a quarter million half million dollar business on it. Right? It's like I'm upgrading from my cricket and I can't even go my high with water and I can go into it. But the experience of owning both, it's like yeah, the 800 feels like an ETG alternative. The other one feels like so mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I definitely, I definitely agree. So man, let's wrap this up, man. I know you have a supply company. Uh, so tell them about that. Let them know where they can find you, your company, and, and shop everything. We're going to put a link there for Stan Bags in the bottom so I can get an uh, affiliate commission on that. I've worked a sweet deal out with Rich. He needs to do that. So that's <laughs> private. But, uh, we'll cut that. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, it's lasertransfersupplies.com. Follow Stan Banks' link because I want to make sure that he gets a kickback from, from anything that we do. Um, and we do mostly white toner stuff. White toner printers, heat presses, all the transfer supplies, things like that. We'll take care of you. Nice, man. So you guys got a lot in this one right here. I hope you guys digested it. And if you're looking at an eye color or a white toner printer at all, go ahead and check out my man, Richie. Uh, I'll put the link to it down in the description. And what did you say it was again? Lasertransfers.com. So we're gonna Flash go. Damage. We're gonna go lasertransfers.tshirtsobsu.com, and that'll be down in the description. Or you can just type it in right there. And yeah, so this will be your boy Stan Banks with T-shirt Sobsu here with Richie talking white toners. Peace. Uh -huh.